Good evening, sheep. Our top stories tonight. Biden falls off his bike, which is not hilarious. Transgender athletes are now banned from women swimming. The Clinton body count goes up. Shocker. Stephen Colbert's staff breaches the Capitol. And Biden's daughter's diary contains shocking accusations against him. What's it say? Stay tuned to find out. But first, we're proud to be building back better than ever now that the stock market is crashing, crypto is crashing, gas prices are through the roof, food shortages, record high inflation, and rising interest rates. As we are now in a recession, President Brandon reassures us that we are not heading into a recession. In other news, we don't know what the term gaslighting means. And happy Father's Day from this past weekend. President Biden celebrated Father's Day by falling off his bike while he was standing still. What an athlete. Let's see that again. Looks like Putin did it. And we have received early word that the X Games will be featuring a new extreme sporting event this year called Standing Up as it is a significant challenge for even the fully mentally and physically competent leader of the free world. And in honor of Father's Day, as Hunter's dad is obviously one of the greatest fathers in the world, a powerful example that you can learn from of how he lovingly fathers his crack addict son that he raised is how he used his personal secret police force, the FBI, to try to hide the existence of his son's laptop that allegedly contained highly incriminating information. Another great example of his fathering is how he used the Secret Service to intervene with Hunter's gun, as Hunter had committed a felony when he lied on the firearms application. But an even more impressive example of his fathering is how he used the FBI to read the homes of two Project Veritas journalists while trying to obtain a diary written by his daughter, Ashley, which contained highly incriminating accusations against her father, which is your president. For more on this endearing act of fathering, we'll throw it over to Tucker Carlson. So why? were the FBI coming to the homes of employees at Project Veritas. What did they do? Were they involved in a human smuggling ring? Were they bringing fentanyl in from China and killing more Americans? No. The FBI believed that Project Veritas was in possession of or had information about a diary written by Joe Biden's daughter, Ashley Biden. The FBI claimed that diary had been stolen. We now know the FBI knew that diary had not been stolen, and it wasn't. But as James O'Keefe pointed out at the time, and didn't have enough people hear him when he said it, what if it was stolen? Having a stolen diary is not a federal crime. So what in that diary was so important that Joe Biden sent FBI agents to get it back? Here's what O'Keefe said. The tipsters indicated that the diary included explosive allegations against then-candidate Joe Biden. I don't see anything wrong with any of that, and neither should you. But what are the shocking accusations that Ashley Biden wrote in her own diary against her father? Well, nothing disturbing if you don't have a soul. So let's find out more from Tucker Carlson. What's in the diary? And now we know what's in the diary, thanks to a new piece in the Daily News, which has a copy of the diary. Josh Boswell is a reporter there at the Daily Mail. He broke this story and he joins us with the answer. Hi, Tucker. Josh, thanks so much for coming on. What is this about? So we've looked at the diary. Um, we've spent a, a lot of time considering carefully what to report from it. And um, what we've chosen to report are some pretty serious things that Ashley, the president's daughter, wrote. She wrote that she was musing over whether her father was sexually inappropriate with her when she was a little girl. She mentions in the diary showers with her dad. Um, she also talks about them being probably not appropriate. Um, she writes that down on one page in her diary. And she also refers to being hypersexualized at a young age. Uh, there's a lot of references in the diary to her um, repeated uh, spells in, in uh, rehab, her um, relapses with drug abuse, alcohol, and sex addiction as well. Just sounds like good fathering. And I do wonder why Biden is such a fan of sexualized drag shows for children. But some critics suggest that those shows for children are wrong 
and that those same drag queens should follow Biden's example and stop dancing for children, for God's sakes, and just start showering with them instead. In other news, a former Clinton advisor named Mark Middleton has been found hanging in a tree with a gunshot blast to his chest. His death has obviously been ruled a suicide, which means yet another person heavily linked to the Clintons has unfortunately committed suicide. Wow, sounds like there's nothing to see here. So let's hear more. After a Freedom of Information Act request, it was discovered that Mr. Middleton admitted Jeffrey Epstein, who is a pedophile, another unfortunate suicide victim, and someone with heavy ties to the Clintons, into the White House on seven different occasions while Clinton was in office. Mark Middleton also had the immense pleasure of flying on Epstein's private jet and is rumored to have been a major player in strengthening Epstein's relationship with Bill Clinton. I think this is nothing but heartwarming to hear because we all know how important friendships are for having a happy life. But because Mr. Middleton didn't leave a suicide note, there's unfortunately no explanation for why someone committed suicide on him. And with countless Clinton associates having committed suicide over the years, we would like to thank the Clintons for altruistically spending so much time with vast numbers of suicidal people in what is obviously an attempt to try to help them. And in other news that hasn't been completely scrubbed from the internet for some reason, the original name for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for Population Control. Take a look. 1998, Dr. Zabin became the founding director of the Bill and Melinda Gates Institute for Population Control with a mission to help de developing countries create their own reproductive health policies and programs. Huh. I wonder why they called it that. Moving along. On Sunday, the world's swimming governing body voted to ban transgender athletes from competing in women's competition. With a 71.5% vote in favor of the ban, spokesperson James Pierce said the reason for the ban is, it's what the scientists are saying, that if you transition after the start of puberty, you have an advantage, which is unfair. <laughs> I doubt that. I guess they haven't heard the latest science that stated there are no biological differences between men and women. Yet, because the non-existent differences are so distinct, some people will go through drastic hormone therapies and surgeries in order to have more of the biological differences of their chosen sex. Science is so exact sometimes that it's confusing. And with the banning of trans athletes, this marks the end of an exciting time in women's swimming. So to help commemorate the sad ending of the golden era in women's swimming, let's take a look back down memory lane at some highlights of some of the best biological males to have ever competed in women's swimming while they could. crying? You're crying. And in other news, former comedian and current communist subverter Stephen Colbert is in some hot water. Nine producers and staff members from his show have been arrested at the Capitol building and charged with unlawful entry. Turns out they were found illegally snooping outside the offices of some GOP Congress members. This means Stephen Colbert's team has breached the Capitol in what objectively looks like an insurrection. But luckily, his team is not expected to be illegally held in solitary confinement for a year and a half, like those dirty right-wing ultra-mega insurrectionists from January 6 were. The difference is that Colbert's staffers unlawfully entered the Capitol building, while some of those right-wing dirty insurrectionists were escorted into the Capitol building by security guards. That's it for tonight's indoctrination. Enjoy the recession. It's a necessary part of the Great Reset. And if you know the Clintons, you better keep your mouth shut. And Biden is father of the year. Oh yeah, and Biden's been accused of rape. Believe all women, but not this one. But Kamala Harris did say she believes all Biden's accusers, but whatever. Good night.